To prove a function using, or to verify a function using Rolle's theorem, we need to satisfy these conditions. So the conditions for Rolle's theorem is that if f of x is continuous in the closed interval a, b, and if f of x is differentiable on the open interval a, b, and if f of a is equal to f of b, then there exists a point c in the open interval a, b, such that f prime of c is equal to zero. Now, the Rolle's theorem is quite similar to the mean value theorem, but the things that we need to consider right here is finding this point C in your um, function. Now, from the mean value theorem, F prime of C is equal to the, to the slope of your secant line connecting A and B. And in this case, our F prime of C will be just equated to zero. So to illustrate the Rolle's theorem using this function, so we have here a function and it says here if f of a is equal to f of b, which means the height of your a and b is the same, like here right here, this is my first interval a, and this is my second interval, which is b, and if we connect these two lines together, we'll have a or f of a and f of b, which is the same, um, same height. Now in that case, we'll be able to find a point in this interval that will be parallel to your secant line connecting A and B. And this is our C, and if you'll notice, they have the same slope, therefore we're able to prove the Rolle's theorem in this particular graphical display. Now, if you can remember, in the mean value theorem, it's pretty much uh, telling you the same concept. But the difference for the mean value theorem is that our A and B, they, they're not in the same height. So if you'll notice, this is my interval A, and this is my interval B, and the point that we're finding or using for this particular function is this point and this point right here for B. And if you'll notice, they don't have the same height. So this one right here is for your mean value theorem, wherein f of A does, doesn't need to be equal to f of B to be able to find a point C that will be parallel to the secant line. So that's the difference between the Rolle's theorem, where f of A and f of B is the same, and for the mean value theorem. Now let's use the Rolle's theorem to verify this particular function. So for our function f of x is x cubed minus x squared minus 6x plus 2 in the uh, closed interval 0 and 3. So to uh, verify the first two conditions, it's easy because our function is a polynomial. So we know that a polynomial is continuous and differentiable, so we have proven the two conditions. Now we just need to prove the third condition, which is f of a should be equal to f of b. So we know a is 0 and b is 3. By plugging in the value of 0 and 3 to your function, we'll be able to find f of a, which is equal to 2, and f of b is equal to 2 as well. So we know that we verify the third condition, so we are now ready to find point c in this closed interval that will have the same slope as the height of f of a and b. So that's what we're going to do on the third step. Finding c wherein f prime of c should be equal to zero. Now, our goal is to find f prime of c equal to zero. So for f of x, which is x cubed minus x squared minus 6x plus 2, the first derivative of f of x is f prime of x equal to 3x squared minus 6x minus 6, wherein we need to find f prime of c is equal to zero. So basically, we're equating the derivative to zero to find the values of our x's. Now, we know that this is not factorable, even though it's a quadratic function, so we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve for the values of x. And the quadratic formula, after using it, will give us x equal to 2 plus or minus square root of 76 all over 6. Now, visually, we're not, be, we're not going to be able to uh, see which one is going to uh, uh, be inside the interval. So what I'm going to do is evaluate this using the calculator and see the exact value of x 2 plus, plus or minus square root of 76 over 6, so I can compare them together. So for this um, x right here, evaluating it will give me 1.786, and the other one is negative 1.120. Both of them are the two values of your x's. However, we just need to um, include the one that is 
inside the closed interval 0 and 3. And between these two values of x is 1.786 is the one that is inside the interval. Therefore, we're not going to include negative 1.120 in our um, values of c. So therefore, we have we're able to prove the function f of x using the Rolle's theorem with c equals to 1.786 on the closed interval 0 and 3. Now, if you want to see the graphical display of this function and its uh, point c, this is your cubic function and this is your closed interval 0 and 3. And if you'll notice, we have two uh, points right here or to um, curvature. So this one right here and this other point right here is basically 1.786 and negative 1.120 on its values of x. But we only need one point right here, which is point C, which is 1.786. So this is what we have for this particular function. Now, let's take it up a notch by using a trigonometric function. So we have your f of x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x in the closed interval 0 and pi. Now if you're going to look at the unit circle, 0 and pi is basically 180 degrees. Let me get a unit circle. So the interval for this particular function should be true for 0 up until pi, which is the first half of your unit circle. So that's what we're going to be working on. You need your unit circle to be able to solve this function in verifying or finding the value of c. Now, the first condition, since it's a sine and cosine function, we know that the graph of sine cosine is continuous. Um, the only uh, graph in a trig function that's not continuous will be tangent and cotangent. So this one will be able to prove the first two conditions. f of x is both continuous and differentiable on the closed interval 0 and pi. So we just need to verify the third condition, which is f of a equal to f of b. And in this case, f of a is equal to 0 by plugging the value of 0 to 2 sine x cosine x. So we'll have 2 sine 0 cosine 0. You just need to use your unit circle to find the value of sine 0, which is 0, and cosine 0, which is 1. 2 times 0 times 1 will be equal to 0. So f of a is equal to 0. And now we're going to do it on the second um, interval, which is pi. So f of pi for two, 2 sine x cosine x is 2 sine pi cosine pi. And again, using the unit circle, sine pi is 0 and cosine pi is equal to negative 1, giving us a value of 0 for f of b. Therefore, the third condition for the Rolle's theorem has been satisfied. And we're ready to find the point c in this closed interval 0 pi, where it's going to be parallel to the secant line connecting a and b. So to do that, we need to find the derivative. So the derivative of f of x for 2 sine x cosine x will be using the product rule. I'm not going to show you how I derive 2 sine x cosine x, but f prime of x here is 2 cosine x cosine x plus 2 sine x times negative sine x using the product rule. Now, since we need to verify or to find c by equating the derivative to 0, that's what I'm going to do here. So I have 2 cosine squared x minus 2 sine squared x because cosine x and cosine x can be combined together and also sine x and negative sine x. So I have this function right here, which is equal to 0. Now I just need to isolate x and to solve for x, I can separate these two together, um, separate them apart. So I have 2 cosine squared x is equal to 2 sine squared x. Getting rid of 2 by dividing both sides by 2, I'll have cosine squared x equal to sine squared x. Getting rid of the exponent, take the square root of both sides, and you'll have cosine x equal to sine x. Now. What you need to do now is to find the values of cosine x that is the same as sine x. And in your unit circle, circle from 0 to pi, there are two values of x's that will satisfy cosine x is equal to sine x. And what are those values? It's under the 45 degree angle and the 135 ang angle, which is pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Because for pi over 4, sine x is square root of 2 over 2, and cosine x is also square root of 2 over 2. And it's the same case in 3 pi over 4. Even though they have different sign, they're, they're still the same, or they still have the same value, so they are still included. So these two values right here will be included in your 
closed interval 0 pi. So therefore, the values of C, or for point C, that is uh, the same slope for the uh, second line AB, we'll have the Rolle's theorem being satisfied, and there exists two Cs, which is pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, which both lie on 0 and pi.